Hello, everybody. Hello, Facebook. How are you? I am so dang excited to be here talking about a topic that is so important in personal development, and that is the inner critic. One thing that if you've read either of my books or you listen to the podcast, you know that this topic comes out uh, this comes up a lot, and I guess I should probably say hi to anyone that might be new to me and you have no idea who I am. Hello, my name is Andrea Owen, and I run the joint over here at Your Kick-Ass Life. I'm a two-time author, podcaster, been blogging for 10 years almost, and am a life coach to high-achieving women who struggle with things like perfectionism, inner critic, numbing out, isolating, and I help them uh, help them have more courage and confidence in their lives. And I am like chomping at the bit wanting to talk to you about this. I've been thinking about this for days and where, where should I start? And this is really great for anyone who is seasoned in personal development or if you're even brand new to personal development. Inner critic is that thing, that negative voice in our head that will creep up on us even if you're like me and you have over a decade of doing personal development and working on yourself for a long time. I just got a private message from somebody on Instagram, one of my clients that I had years and years ago, and she was telling me that her inner critic has come back into her life because she's onto this new project. And I replied and I'm like, absolutely. It sort of changes form and comes back when uh, we're onto something big. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. This video, I wanted to talk to you about six kind of instigators or triggers, if you will, of your inner critic and why this is so important for you to know is so that you can know when it's happening because it's really no use to you to have tools if something is going on in your life and you don't even realize that it's happening. If you're running on autopilot and don't even realize until you're hours or sometimes days into listening to that negative self-talk, then the tools are kind of futile, right? So I want you to have all of these you know, preliminary tools in place so that you can recognize that negative self-talk and really just get a kind of a leg up on it, right? Okay, so thank you, I see your comments. What I want you to do is when I'm telling you about these six different triggers, give me the raised hand emoji or just type in the comments, me, if this is something that you can relate to because I know I would be typing in me for all six of them. The first one is when you start comparing yourself to other people. Okay, so here we are on Facebook, on the Facebook. <laughs> How often does this happen, right? You see someone's vacation pictures, somebody got a promotion, they're celebrating something in your life that you would love to have. Maybe someone lost weight and you're not feeling the best in your body and you start comparing yourself. We all do it, right? We all make judgments about ourselves. We feel like we don't measure up to others and the inner critic can get the best of us in that we get sucked in and before we know it, we feel like crap about ourselves just because someone's you know, graduating, getting their PhD and then we feel like we're not good enough or smart enough or you know, all of these dreams that we had that we never went after and on and on and on, right? So that's number one. When you start comparing yourself to other people, the inner critic goes crazy. The second one is when you start a new project, maybe it's a creative project, or maybe when you start a new job, when maybe you start something you just don't have the experience yet, your inner critic could come in and tell you, well, I'm never gonna get this right. Um, that person has so much more experience than I am. I'm doing it wrong. What are, are they talking about me because I, you know, because I've, I just started this new job. When you're kind of, you know, you're just like, eh, I don't know, which all, we all are in that place, right? Your inner critic can really have a field day with that one. The third trigger or instigator of our inner critic is when we make a mistake, which we all do. We all screw up sometimes. I mean, this can be a real ass kicker, right? And this can even send us into shame spirals where maybe you drop the ball on a project at work. Maybe you, okay, this happened to me. True story. We first moved to North Carolina and they, I didn't know that it was, um, what do they call it? Early release day from school. My kids are in elementary school. And there was an early release day and I had turned my phone off because it was my daughter's birthday and I was spending time with her. And 
my son had been out of school and he was like a brand new school. I feel like the worst mom in the world. The school was calling. The teacher had to drive him to our house. It was in my eyes, a complete disaster. I felt like the worst mom in the world. I see so many hands raised in the comments. Yes. When we make a mistake, whether you're a parent or not, we all screw up. We all have these small fails or even like big fails and our inner critic can sure get a hold of us when that happens. So the fourth time, the fourth instigator or trigger in our life is when something difficult or challenging happens in our life. And so this might be a little bit different than making a mistake. Maybe your relationship is kind of on the rocks. You know, you've hit a rough patch and your inner critic says, oh, well, this one's going to end just like the last one. Or, you know, there you go, picking a terrible partner again. Or maybe... Um, I don't know, it could be a multitude of different examples of just challenging times in life that we, that we all face. Maybe you are a business owner and work is slow. You don't have a lot of customers or, or clients and your inner critic starts talking about that. You go into that fear and scarcity and worst case scenario. That is definitely a time where the inner critic pipes up a lot. So two more. The fifth time, the fifth instigator of your inner critic is when, this is kind of one of my favorites, when you're onto something big. So this can be when you're even thinking about and or when you're going after uh, a goal and a dream that you have. I have a client right now that is seriously considering quitting her job and starting her own business. I actually have two clients that are considering that, two totally different businesses that they're thinking about. And they go from excitement, like sheer excitement, to sometimes terror. And the inner critic saying all of the reasons that this is going to fail, all of the logical reasons that they should not do the thing. I see thumbs up on that one. And Courtney's raising your hand too. Yes, yes, that is a big one. And, and the reason that that is my favorite, I'll be honest with you, is because sometimes if you can get to that place of, of comfort that you're hearing your inner critic and then that is sort of your indicator of, okay, maybe I am onto something big. Maybe this is so important to me that my inner critic wants to keep me safe and not rock the boat because it's way out of my comfort zone. It's that important to me. And the sixth and final, and I know that there's more, but these were just sort of the six that came off the top of my head. The sixth time or trigger that your inner critic might really start driving the bus of your life is when you realize the things about yourself that you would like to work on. So I see this all the time in personal development. You know, maybe I, I have a podcast episode that comes out and I'll get an email from somebody saying, this podcast episode rocked my world. I had such an aha moment. And then I went into that place of, oh my God, I have so many issues. How am I ever going to figure this out? This happens a lot, y'all, when people do inner critic work, when they really start to notice how much their inner critic is chatty and how much their inner critic tries to keep them safe and, you know, kind of keeps them in this comfort zone, this box that they've created for themselves. That can be humbling. It can be shocking. And I think that we kind of get in that place where that's that self-awareness place where we can't unsee what we now see about the things that we want to change and work on, but yet getting to the other side feels so far away and so scary to actually do the work and use your tools. And I just want to say that, you know, that's a tender place to be. And I, I just want to acknowledge that because I don't think it gets talked about a whole lot in personal development. I call it the point of no return when you can't unsee, I <laughs> can't go back to the way your life was before, just like being in denial. And then the other side seems so far away. And that's the six. And what I have for you is a free ebook and audio version because I know a lot of you listen to the podcast and you would rather listen to it on audio. That link is in the description here in Facebook. And I'm going to go ahead and pop it in the comments just so you guys can have it. It's totally free and it is the three ways, three tools for you to manage your inner critic. These are practical tools that you can start using today. These aren't, you know, deep, dark, let, let's dive into your whole family systems and, and, you know, uncover all of that and, 
I all think that that's really important and I have tools for that too. But this ebook and audio are really sort of just foundational things for you to have that I would love for you to have for free. And it's a mini ebook. It's a, it's a relatively short read and the audio is, is in there as well. So you get both of those for free. The link is in the description and in the comments here. And oh my gosh, so many of you are raising your hand and doing thumbs up. Doesn't that make you feel so much better? Like you're not alone. Like you're not, you know, some like anomaly. And I'm the only one that has this inner critic, this inner voice that's, that's keeping me safe and small and everything. You're not the only one. You're absolutely positively not the only one. I've been doing this work for a decade now and it is universal. It's universal. It comes up in either two, it looks like two different ways for the women that I work with. It is either that voice saying you're not good enough, you shouldn't go after it, that kind of voice. And then sometimes when women do the work and they can get past that voice and they get some confidence and courage and they go after the things that they want and they really step into their bigger lives, then the voice says, oh, well, who do you think you are? So it kind of like, oh, we just got goosebumps because that's what happens to me sometimes. <laughs> So it just, it kind of like comes at you from both sides. It's like the one, two punch. And I just, I say all that because I don't want you to feel like you're the only one. And I also want you to feel like there is hope. There is absolutely ways to manage it. And so many of the women that I've worked with are living proof of that, myself included. So head on over to that link that's in the description and in the comments. And I hope that you enjoy it. And I will see you all next week here on Facebook for another personal development video. Thank you so much for being here and watching, whether you're here live or the replay. I am honored that you spend time with me. I know how important your time is. So until next time, I'll see y'all. Bye-bye.